Oh hi, it's so great to see you. I haven't seen you for ages. And one of the reasons why is because, well, I've been a bit stuck. I've got too many lenses. That's right, we're going to discover, am I going to keep the Sigma Vintage K2 zoom lens from 70 to 210 millimeters? Because the Canon M50, when shooting in 4K, uh, well, it crops in at 2.56. We need to time 70 by 2.56 and 200 by 2.56, which basically gives us the ability for me to shoot from here to Indonesia and from here to Sydney. I think I can get to Sydney from here. There's one big reason why you might think I should keep it. Until a year ago, it had one owner. Uh, it was cared for lovingly, and I know this because that owner was my father. And when he died, I've inherited his lens. That's not much of a reason. You shouldn't be slave to what you think other people would think about what you're thinking, about what they would think if you got rid of their lens. And on the side of getting rid of it, it's got wicked rolling shutter. It's pretty heavy, it's super long, it's pretty bulky. That's right. We're going to go through all the reasons why I might keep this lens and why I might flick it. Adding to the difficulty, you're watching the very first film I've edited using DaVinci Resolve. I've just switched over from Premiere Pro and it's taken some time to get used to. One of the first thing you'll notice is how brown the image is. Yes, it zoomed in magnificently, but the image has come out kind of brown and pretty flat. I believe that's due to the lack of an IR cut filter. There's too much infrared light coming into the lens and it's affecting the image. And we can see that the zoom is phenomenal. You're going to need an adapter. It's really a spacer and it just screws on like this. That's ready to go. And where better to take it than the southwest of Western Australia? We see a different problem. The shots in the city were taken with a tripod inside. It was fairly stable. It's a pretty crappy tripod, but I like it. It's very light for traveling and that's why you buy the M50 is because it's light and maneuverable and very, very high quality. It's really great for travel and the travel tripod is excellent, but not with this lens. I don't want to take a huge tripod to this kind of environment. I like to travel light. At the time of shooting, this footage looked absolutely fine. Uh, but of course, once you get back to editing, you immediately see the problem. And this is how you progress a lot faster as a filmmaker because if you can quickly shoot and quickly edit then you're closing that loop faster. You tend not to make the same mistake twice. You start to see the quality of this lens when the image is stable. These waves may look impressive but they're pretty tame, they're pretty safe. Now that's not the case for most of the WA coastline. If you try and learn how to surf in Western Australia, you're in for pain. Most of the coastline is limestone rock and you have large swells traveling across the Indian Ocean. West Australians grow up throwing themselves at these rocks. You're watching the painting of the largest outdoor mural in Western Australia. It's the facade of a hotel, and the painter is Matt Adnett. In this time lapse, you might be wondering how I've achieved such a smooth tilt and pan. The lens is so heavy that the tripod is sagging under its weight. My father was a photographer, and when I was growing up, I was surrounded by a lot of the equipment that photographers have, uh, film rolls, and my father had certain canisters that he'd put film in, or black bags that he would stuff his hands in to form a kind of temporary dark room. And my parents used to always wax lyrical and discuss the future and 
a dream one day of having their own and larger. Look, I didn't have a fantastic relationship with my father. I was very lucky to have a great relationship with him in those last moments of his life. Uh, so I'm really glad to have repaired the relationship at that point. While I was staying there, I found the old film camera and also a whole bunch of lenses in the top of a cupboard. They'd been sitting there for at least 10 or 15 years unused. Also found a bunch of photos. I was really curious to dive into them and you probably don't really recognize it as much because when we see older photographs, we see photographs of people and kind of images that are timeless. But photography goes through fashions. And when my father was taking photos, the fashion was to shoot cityscapes without any people in them. He went to New York and there are a whole bunch of shots of New York City completely deserted. It's quite an eerie feeling to look at those photos. However long I have this lens, it's been a real privilege to be able to use it in a way that it was never really designed for. It's only ever shot photos until this moment. I think there's a metaphor there about fathers and sons, or fathers and children. I'm a father and I believe my role in life is to create a better environment for my children and to welcome them into the world and they can surpass me in any way they want. I think a lot of relationships break down between fathers and sons when there is really intense competition and an unwillingness to bend and let time move on. Here's how it looks with the Canon M50. We can see the focus peaking is set to red on this camera, and it's looking good. Watch what happens when I zoom in. I'm going to take the end of the lens and bring it closer to the body. Now this is zooming it to 200 millimeters, and we can see that it has cropped right in. There's that tree way over there. Shooting people side on works very well. If they turn to face the camera, their face will flatten like a plate. This lens has the ability to compress the foreground and the background. That's why when you're shooting objects like plants or animals, if you have a dark background, it seems to work really well. It doesn't perform as well shooting at night. These shots were taken with an aperture of 4.5 and an ISO of 640. It really shines for me when shooting animals, whether they're domestic animals or wild animals like the seals we saw earlier and the kangaroos. I don't think I've ever shot as many animals as this and that's because you don't have to be right up against them to get them in the shot. Even though it only opens up to 4.5, because it's such a long focal distance, you do get a blurry background. And the background has an almost film-like grain to it. All video was straight out of camera. It's my first try with DaVinci Resolve. It's gonna take me some time. It's your turn. Should I keep this lens or should I flick it?